Hey gang, so today we're going to be looking at a video by Cameron and Ham talking about evolution. Wait, is this about a team up with James Cameron and John Ham? Oh man, I have so many questions for Cameron about Avatar and the biology of Pandora. No, I mean, that's just science. What gets me is that almost all life of Pandora seems to have evolved with six limbs. Here on Earth, the majority of vertebrates have a very similar skeletal structure. Four limbs, rib cage, skull, um, what's that other thing that all vertebrates have? That's the deal. While they may be different sizes and shapes, almost all vertebrates on Earth share the same skeleton structure. So, why on Pandora? Where everything seems to have a six-limb skeletal structure, does the Na'vi only have four limbs? I hope Cameron answers this evolutionary conundrum. Okay, let's check it out. Hi, I'm Kirk Cameron. Whoa! 80s heartthrob Kirk Cameron? Oh man, I thought I was excited to see James Cameron, but this is even better! Attention, ladies and gentlemen, Kirk Cameron. Oh! Oh, unbelievable! Oh my god, how lucky are we, huh? Hey Stewie, what are you doing tonight? Oh, nothing, just watching Kirk Cameron. Alright, so it isn't James Cameron, but still, Kirk Cameron and John Hamm? Two big name actors? That's a big deal. I hope he explains the end of Mad Men. Did Okay, let's get to this. Thanks for joining us for a special YouTube exclusive with Ken Ham. Oh, the Ark Encounter guy? <sighs> Fine. Let's see what they have to say about evolution. Uh, Ken, you have spent so much of your life dealing with dinosaurs, the flood, evolution, the book of Genesis. Uh, can Christians believe in evolution and millions of years with regard to the age of the earth? Well, you know, there are Christians who do believe in millions of years, and I'm not saying they're not a Christian, but I will say they're undermining the authority of the Word of God. Oh yeah, it would be wrong to say bad things about people who see things slightly differently, just that they're going against the Word of an Almighty God. Now, I'm not saying they ain't Christian, I'm just saying that these so-called Christians aren't following the Word of God. I'm not saying they ain't Christian, just that God Himself would say they aren't Christian. But I'd never say that. I spent weeks perfecting this excellent Australian accent I did. The idea of millions of years came out of atheism of the 1800s, uh, where atheists said the fossil layers were laid down millions of years before man. The reason we know the Earth is millions, well, more accurately, billions of years old, isn't just because atheists said that fossils were laid down millions of years before man, but because of evidence and observation. As our understanding of the natural world increases, we get a better understanding of how things really are. Observations like using radiometric dating show the age of the Earth to be roughly 4.5 billion years old. Scientists do understand that their work isn't exact as they would like, and that imperfections and variables can offset their readings. This is why multiple dating techniques are used, and all support the general age of the Earth to be much, much greater than 6,000 years. Uh, but the fossils are full of death, uh, diseases like cancer, abscesses, and so on. After God made man, he said everything is very good. So if you believe in millions of years, you're blaming God for disease, God for death. The Bible blames our sin for death. Death came after sin. You can't add millions of years to the Bible and be consistent. I don't accept that either man or God are the reasons for death. I blame death on the fact that bodies break down over time. Cancer is when cells divide uncontrollably and spread to surrounding tissues. This is because our bodies are not perfect. Well, except for my wife's. I think her body's perfect, but then again, I may be a little biased. Our bodies, and the bodies of every organism existing today, is the current result of the guess and check process of evolution. If the previous organisms were able to survive long enough to breed before their bodies broke down, then their genes were passed on. It isn't surprising that death and disease are observed in such a system. Why do you think that evolution is such a popular belief? Oh, oh, I know this one, I know this one. I'm pretty sure the reason evolution is such a popular belief is because the observation that genes and germ cells will mutate and the organisms that are best able to survive will pass on those mutations, right? I bet that's it. I bet he's going to say that. 
Let's see. Well, you know, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And if you go back to the temptation in Genesis 3, uh, the devil said to Adam and Eve, did God really say you can be your own God? And because we sinned in Adam, we have that nature. We would rather trust the word of man than the word of God. And so therefore, if we're not looking to God's word and letting him speak to us and believing what he said, you know, our nature is we want to explain things on our own uh, by ourselves. We don't want to listen to God's word. And if you're not going to believe in creation as, as the Bible tells us, then what are, you going to, what are you going to do? You've got to come up with some sort of evolutionary ideas of explaining things. And I think even many Christians have succumbed uh, to that temptation to take man's beliefs and add them to God's word. Wow. <laughs> I was way off there. <sighs> People don't just accept evolution because we have to come up with some way of explaining things. The scientific process is not about just plugging any answer into the unknown. It's about trying to find the best way to explain what we have observed. Darwin didn't just say, I want a godless reason for why organisms seem so well adapted to their environment. He made observations during his trip on the Beagle and realized, among other things, that if a bird was born with a beak slightly better for gathering food, it would do better than other birds that were not as adapted and its descendants would eventually replace the less adapted birds. Why are there so many evolutionary creationists? I mean, why wouldn't people who are Christians just believe that the Bible means what it appears to mean and go with something that is now stretching everything out over millions of years? I debated skipping this part because I don't like speaking for other people, but thought I should answer at least some of this. I think it's because and I know some of my viewers may disagree with me on this. Many believers do try to be honest about what has been observed in the world and want to reconcile that with their beliefs. They accept what the evidence shows while still retaining a belief in their deity. They still want to believe in God, so they need to modify their beliefs to encompass what has been shown about the world. The evidence shows that the world is much older than Usher's calculations. So those Christians who are honestly looking at the evidence but want to retain their beliefs need to accept that parts of their holy book need to be understood as allegorical. You know, I think in today's world, the teaching of evolution of millions of years has permeated the world. And many people have been indoctrinated to think that that is science because the word science has been used for our technology and the word science is used for evolution of millions of years. No, science is the attempt. No, science is the attempt to understand the world through observation, experimentation and testing of theories. The key components of evolution that organisms are slightly different from their parents, and the tautology that organisms with mutations that help them survive and thrive will be more likely to survive and thrive and pass on those mutations have been observed. Engineers use scientific principles to help them develop. Engineers use scientific principles to help them devise new technologies, and that is true for evolution as well. Doctors have made substantial developments in medical and biological areas through their understanding of natural evolution. You cannot dismiss the technical advances made by understanding evolution while playing up the advances made by understanding other scientific fields. If you're going to be using the, let's face it, fallacious argument that science is true simply because we get technological advances from it, then the advances we get from evolutionary theory must mean it is also, from your reasoning at least. I find even many pastors think, you know what, I believe in technology, of course we do, um, so I believe in science, yes, I understand that. Um, therefore, I, I have to believe in evolution because that science, it's the same science. Mm. It's not the same science. The science that builds our technology is based on observation, experimentation, repeatable uh, experiments and so on using your five senses. Yes, and evolution has been demonstrated through observation and experimentation. The famous Lenski experiment showed that organisms do change between generations. And that's what evolution means, change. And if that change is advantageous to the organism, based on the environment they find themselves in, then that change is passed on throughout the population of that organism, eventually displacing the original population. Science or knowledge about the past, that's belief about the past. And I think many people have been trapped into thinking that, oh, if we believe what the Bible says, we're giving up science, which you're not. That's what it's important to understand. Here's the thing. If you live by faith, guided by the claim that the Bible is the inerrant word of God, that's from a scientific standpoint. If you want to live that way, that's fine. But if you're being honest, you have to admit that you're living by faith alone. And, more often than not, in order to accept a completely literal definition of the Bible, or most holy books, 
you need to ignore real-world observations that have shown to be contradictory to biblical claims. Ken, is there real evidence for a creator in the world today? First of all, you know, even the, uh, the aspect of design, meaning there has to be a designer. It's interesting how scientists will go into a cave and they'll see an, uh, a, a spear, uh, you know, as a spearhead or an axe, and, and they immediately think, oh, this is designed because humans lived here, humans were here. And yet you look at DNA, that complex information system, language system that builds life. It is the most complex language information system in the entire universe. I mean, there's no comparison when it comes to the amount of, of complexity and design in DNA compared to an arrowhead or something like that. And yet they look at DNA and say chance random processes and they look at an arrowhead in a cave and say that's designed. Uh, so the evidence for design is so obvious when you look at living things. That is not evidence. The difference between arrowheads and living organisms is that arrowheads and other basic tools simply do not reproduce. Now, I'm not a geologist, I'll admit that. But, as I understand it, rocks don't give birth to other, similar rocks with slight variations, with the rocks being shaped to be attached to arrows being more likely to be selected to give birth to more rocks. They're tools, individually made. On the other hand, Biological organisms have had billions of years of guess and check breeding to result in the complex biodiversity we see today. The other thing is that we have evidence of organisms making tools. We still have no evidence of a deity making up every form of life in such a way as to appear as the slow progression we see in the fossil record. Can do creation and science contradict, or are they both singing the same song? Well, you know, when I debated Bill Nye in 2014 at the Creation Museum in Northern Kentucky, he said, okay, this debate's about science versus the Bible. And I got up and said, no, it's not about science versus the Bible. Um, it, it's about the science of one religion versus the science of another religion. Oh, yes, that classic debate. I remember watching with my youngest daughter way back when it first aired. Nye brought up evidence which supported things like evolution and the old age of the earth. Ham said, but God did it. I think the most telling part of the debate came during the question and answer, where both gentlemen were asked what would change their minds. Ken said nothing would. Bill said evidence. What, if anything, would ever change your mind? As far as the Word of God is concerned, no. N no one's ever going to convince me that, uh, that the Word of God I I is not true. Time, Mr. Knight? Uh, we would just need one piece of evidence. I think that tells you all you need to know about who is more interested in what is actually true over what they believe. Accepting evolution is not a religion. It is simply observing the world and understanding that small changes over time can result in the variety of life. And uh, if it is a religion, can I count this as a ministry instead of doing my best to teach about it? Woo! Tax-free status, baby! You know, the word science um, the word science means uh, knowledge. It comes from the Latin scientia, and it means knowledge. No, science is not simply knowledge. Science is a process in order to receive, and more importantly, confirm knowledge the study of the world. Scientists determine what is most likely true based on the evidence at their disposal, and test that over and over and over again. Darwin did not just say, hey, I think evolution is true, everyone should believe me. He spent years going over his work and the observations he made to confirm it as best he could before he published those observations in The Origin of Species. And in the time since then, more and more knowledge has come into the hands of scientists to support, and yes, modify, Darwin's claims. But the underlying conclusion he came to is that mutations occur between generations, and those with mutations that allow them to thrive are passed on to the next generation, eventually supplanting the original population. And so, what are you saying? It's knowledge versus the Bible? No, 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 not at all. And there's different sorts of knowledge. There's knowledge that you can gain by using your five senses in the present that builds space shuttles and airplanes and computers, or your knowledge about the past when you weren't there, your beliefs about the past. And that's what we've got to understand. So when somebody says, oh, science conflicts with the Bible, are you talking about man's beliefs about the past? What are you talking about? Because usually that's what they're saying. Science conflicts with the Bible because they're believing man's beliefs about evolution, millions of years, about the past. That's not observational science. Science does not differentiate between historical and observable science. Science takes what we have viewed and uses it to understand the world around us. 
All experiments take place in the past. Data gathering is always done on things that have already happened and that data is used to make predictions. For example, using the knowledge of evolutionary biology we had at the time, scientists predicted where and when some of the earliest land-based vertebrates should be found, specifically the Devonian period and what is now the Northern Arctic Circle. Lo and behold, in 2004, those predictions were shown to be true when just such a fossil was found on Ellesmere Island in rock that was measured to be as old as expected. And since then, even more fossils have been found to support the rise of tetrapods as predicted by evolutionary theory. Creationists believe in science. We believe in science. We believe in technology. Um, and we teach science even at the Creation Museum in the Ark. We have science labs here. I was a science teacher and I was granted my credentials in science by secularists who I went through a secular university and they said, you now have your credentials in science because I believed in observational science. Yes, but you only accept science that already conforms to your current belief system. If evidence is presented that disproves a current understanding of the world, then scientists should change their views to accept this new evidence. The scientific community is not dogmatic and will change their minds when a compelling reason is given. Or at least that's how it's supposed to be. I mean, look how well everyone took it when Pluto was declassified as a planet. Why is what we think about evolution and creation so important for us in our everyday life? Well, what you believe about where you came from affects your whole world view. It affects your view of yourself, your view of your future. It affects every aspect of your life. It, ex it, it affects your world view, what you believe about uh, life and how you should act and how you determine what's right and what's wrong. I don't need a deity to determine what is right and wrong. I have empathy to do that. If an action harms somebody without some kind of corresponding good coming from it, then I say that action is wrong. And just because you don't like where the idea of a scientific concept takes you doesn't mean you get to dismiss it. I don't like the idea that human beings have the ability to casually wipe out vast swaths of the human race and render much of the planet unlivable due to radioactive fallout with just the press of a button. But that doesn't mean I'll then say that nuclear physics isn't real. Our personal feelings don't dictate what is true. If there's a creator, he owns us. He sets the rules. He decides what's right and what's wrong. The Bible says he created us, that he created a man and a woman, that he created marriage, and marriage is to be a man and a woman, uh, that he created two genders of humans. He created male and female. Cool claim, bro, but what do you have to back it up? You have lines in books to tell you that your deity exists and that it owns us. And personally, I have issues with owning other human beings. But what do you have to show that these claims are true? And science has found that there's a lot of malleability in human gender, and the makeup of the human brain does not always match up to their outward appearance. I should note that this research is being done right now, or as you would call it, observational and not historical science. So, by your own claims, you should accept the fluidity of gender. Unless you just throw the science you don't like. As for marriage, it's become a government institution, and as one it cannot, or at least should not, discriminate against men or women. If a man is able to get married to a woman, then he should also be able to get married to a man, otherwise the system is being discriminatory based on sex. And if you want to take it out of the hands of the government, fine, but that also means that anybody can just say they're married, even if they don't follow your religious beliefs on who can get married. The Bible tells us that we're sinners, we're in rebellion against God, and God says because of this we'll spend eternity separated from him, which is why he provided a savior and said if you put your faith and trust in the Lord Jesus, God's son who stepped into history to be a man, uh, to die on a cross, be raised from the dead, offers a free gift of salvation, then you spend eternity with him. Very convenient that you only get evidence of this deity after you die, and there's no way to corroborate this claim. With no way to prove or disprove the statement, there's no reason to accept your assertion that there's a God at all, let alone the specific one you're referring to. What can you show us, outside the claims of your book, that your specific, or indeed any, God is responsible for the universe? But if you believe we came by natural processes and there's no God, who decides right and wrong? You do. As I've already said, I don't need a deity to determine what is right and wrong. My moral compass is based on harm. If an action causes harm without any good coming from it, then I say it's wrong. Um, 
So what's the purpose and meaning of life? Ultimately, there's no purpose. When you die, you're done. That's what Bill Nye said to me when I debated him. I, I, I was taking him through the ark and I said, what happens when you die, Bill? When you die, you're done. Then what's the purpose of fighting against creationists? What's the purpose of, of anything ultimately? When you die, you're done. That means life has no ultimate purpose and meaning. Well, for starters, just because you don't like the fact that maybe no ultimate purpose or meaning to our lives doesn't mean that God will come to existence to give you one. What you like or don't like does not determine how the world works. And so what if the world doesn't have an ultimate purpose or meaning? We can make our own purpose. As I've said in the past, mine is generally to be the best husband and father possible, along with maybe educating and entertaining while having fun with these videos. And while I've never communicated with a man directly, from everything I've seen, it appears the purpose that Mr. Nye decided on is to educate people on the reality of the world based on the evidence that has been collected, which I think is a fairly noble purpose to pursue. I like to think of myself as an anti-nihilist. Yes, the world isn't going to last forever. Humanity, each of us, will die out eventually, and the heat death of the universe will ultimately mean the end of everything. But that doesn't mean we can't do what we can to make things better for those who are here right now, or the generations that will come after. We should treasure the life we have, celebrate it, because it's maybe the only one we get. Humans are odd. They're doomed. But a thing isn't beautiful because it lasts. Yes, we will not be here forever. There's a good chance the universe will most likely never register that humans ever existed. At most, a blip in time on a pale blue dot. Intelligent life that rose, thrived, and in all likelihood, eventually burnt out. Yeah, more poetic than I could have put it. Yeah, we're all gonna die, but that doesn't mean we can't enjoy the time we do have or push back against the inevitable. Because right here, and right now, we do exist. And even if it's ultimately futile, I'm going to do my best to enjoy the time I do have. But God's Word tells us, no, when you die, you're not done. Your, your body dies, but the real you, your soul, who you are, you're not done. And you're, you can spend eternity with the Lord Jesus Christ in heaven if you put your faith and trust in Him for salvation, or you'll be eternally separated from God. It's very, very important. Uh, to understand that what you believe about where you came from affects your eternity, affects everything. That's cool. If it gets you through your day to believe that, go ahead and believe it. But don't use your faith to deny what can be shown to be true. Look, evolution is supported by science. It's been shown over and over again that when there's environmental pressure, organisms with mutations that allow them to survive and thrive do pass on those mutations to the populations. And when enough of those mutations build up, it results in a new species. We can use this knowledge to explain the vast biodiversity found on the planet. As long as we've got each other, like you are, we got the world spinning right in our hands, baby, you and me. We've got to be the luckiest dreamers who never quit dreaming.